Today we are going to talk about vitamins if you are British and vitamins if you are American. And I promise you three things. I'm going to share a deadly secret with you that you must know. And I promise to save you a lot of money and to stop big businessmen stealing from you. So friends, Romans and countrymen, lend me your ears for the next few minutes and I'll help you save your life and your money. And it all starts with something known as a vitamin or a vitamin. So what are these vitamins and vitamins? The definition of a vitamin is an essential nutrient needed by the body in small quantities for proper functioning and health. There are many types of them. They start with the vitamins A's and B's and go to C, D, E and K. The vitamin B is a big category, has a B1, B2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 9, also known as folic acid and B12. These are the major types. You must have heard their names and we've all come across them in one form or another. Where do you find vitamins? Basically, they're found all around us. I mean, um, nature is full of them. Eggs, milk, bananas, strawberries, fish and cheese, even coffee, which has vitamin B2 and vitamin B5. The best source of vitamins uh, for millennia has been fresh fruits and vegetables. These are preserved, packaged and delivered to us, you and me. By Mother Nature herself. Now having, now having a diet rich in fruits and vegetables is quite helpful. It helps your body function properly and uh, it also has benefits against cancer. It reduces the risk of many cancers, for example prostate and breast, bladder and brain, bowel and stomach and lung cancer, just to name a few. So definitely having fruits and vegetables which are rich in vitamins is a helpful thing. But then there is another thing known as man-made synthetic vitamins. These are also known as vitamin supplements. These are made by big pharmaceutical companies. They come in all colors and shapes and forms of tablets and capsules and syrups and whatnot. Now, these uh, man-made synthetic vitamin supplements are big business. And when I say big business, trust me, I mean big business, both in the numbers of people using them and the amount of billions of bucks they make, the drug industry that is. So for example, in America, almost half the population, 50% of the Americans, they are using these vitamins and more than $140 billion are spent every year at present. Now that we've talked about vitamins, natural and synthetic, let's go back to the three points we discussed earlier. The deadly secret that you must know how to save you money and how to stop people stealing from you. Let's start with number one, the deadly secret that we must know. This is a top secret. So brace yourself and you might be very, very surprised and shocked. First of all, the secret is very well guarded by the vitamin making drug companies. Sadly, the health agencies are also keeping this away from the public knowledge. Not a lot is talked about it. And we need to know and share this secret because knowing this secret can save lives, yours, mine, and millions of people. But there's a warning. When I tell you this secret, it's going to make some very rich people very angry because they are making billions of dollars exploiting innocent victims like you and me. So what should you do? Let's make them angry. Okay, here goes. We've got the natural vitamins, the ones from vegetables, fruits, and all the natural sources like the eggs and milk, which reduce risk of cancer. And this is not just a hearsay. There are scientific experiments and evidence to back it up. Health authorities have looked into it, done trials, and they know cancer risk goes low when you eat fruits and vegetables rich in vitamins. What happens when you take the synthetic ones? They increase the risk of cancer. Yes, you heard me right. The synthetic vitamins, they increase the risk of you and me getting cancer. Shocking, isn't it? I was amazed myself, mostly because nobody tells this to the public. The health authorities are letting them being sold openly over the counter. And everyone is using them or has used them. 
let's put it into perspective. We are being encouraged to spend good money on buying and consuming something that increases the risk of us getting cancer. Now, hold on a minute. The vitamin supporters, which is mostly the drug companies who make them, they're going to be a bit upset. They're going to ask, uh, where's the evidence? Because we have always been told by them that vitamins are really good for you. You must have them. And if you have to give a final verdict, you have to bring evidence, right? Okay, so here it is. I'm going to give you evidence, and I'm going to give you more than one evidence. In fact, I'm going to categorize this evidence. So let's see what happens when vitamin supplements are given to, number one, people with low risk of cancer. Number two, people at high risk of cancer, like uh, smokers, for example. And number three, people who already have cancer. So from an oncologist point of view, I see the world divided into three categories, people with low risk of cancer, people with high risk of cancer, and people who might have cancer. So let's see what happens when you give vitamins to all these three categories. Let's start with category number one. So people with low risk of cancer. Now, there's a Norwegian trial, in fact, two trials in 2006, known as the Norwit and the Wenbit, the Norwegian vitamin trial and the Western Norway vitamin B interventional trial. They were looking at heart disease and use of vitamins, and they thought heart disease might get better with vitamin. It didn't. But what did they find? An increased risk of cancer and cancer deaths in Norwegian patients given vitamins for heart disease. Continuing with people with low risk of cancer taking vitamins, more trials, select trial. Now, this trial is targeted at reducing the risk of cancer because selenium and vitamin E reduce risk of cancer if taken in natural form. So they got 35,533 men. Half were given selenium vitamin E in tablet form and half were not given. What happened? The risk of prostate cancer increased. It didn't decrease. It increased. And there was statistical significance. Now, I'm not a statistician, but if you are one or you have a friend, you give them these figures, the HR hazard ratio of 1.17 and the p-value of 0.08, and they'll tell you that's not by chance. There is a very strong link. Now, let's move on to category number two. Remember, we said people with high risk of cancer, what will happen if we give them vitamins? Would we reduce the risk of cancer? 1994, high-risk group, smokers. 29,133 patients, half of them given vitamin E and beta carotene, synthetic man-made one. Five to eight years. What happened? More deaths from lung cancer with vitamin use. These are smokers. They are at risk of lung cancer. Give them vitamins. They have more chance of dying from lung cancer. Again, 8% more deaths. Statistically significant. Not a chance finding. The trial was done in 1994. Nobody talks about it. Let's see more smokers, people at high risk of cancer. Former smokers, let's include them. 1996, 18,314 people given vitamin A and beta carotene or placebo. Talking synthetic vitamins here. What happens to them? More risk of lung cancer with vitamin use. More deaths from lung cancer with vitamin use. Trial stopped only after 21 months they couldn't run it any longer and again statistically significant findings more trials were done people were curious people thought we could cure cancer with vitamins or at least reduce the risk so 2007 they decided to give folic acid supplementation to reduce bowel cancer what happened people who had folic acid they got more polyps lumps in the bowel polyps can become cancer over years there's a pre-cancerous trait. And there was a bonus finding, more prostate cancer in those who are getting vitamins. Now, that's a bonus you don't want. And again, statistically significant finding, not a chance finding. So maybe vitamins might help in cancer patients. Um, There was a study, breast cancer patients using vitamin supplements. Those breast cancer patients who take vitamin A, C, E, carotenoid, they are at more risk of breast cancer coming back. Those who take iron, vitamin B12, omega-3 fatty acid, increased risk of cancer returning and an increased risk of cancer causing death in these patients. So, quite a shocker, isn't it? We've got vitamins, 
natural uh, from fruits and vegetables. And these natural vitamins, they reduce the risk of cancer. Trials have shown that and statistically significant reduction in risk of cancer. But then you have these synthetic vitamins, the tablets, the pills made by the drug companies and the syrups and sold over the counter and we are enticed into buying them. They increase the risk of cancer. Doesn't make any sense. What is the reason? Why on earth is this happening? And to answer this question, we have to go back to the definition of vitamins. So remember, we said vitamin or vitamin is an essential nutrient needed by the body in small quantities for proper functioning and health. Focus, small quantities. When you have natural vitamin sources, you've got the fruits and vegetables and you compare it to the synthetic one, there is a big stark difference. And the difference is natural amounts are small amounts. They are slowly released and body would only absorb what it needs. But when you take them in the pill and capsule and serum form, large amount is released. It's released very fast and the body takes more than it needs. These pharmaceutical vitamins force the body to absorb as much as possible, which the fruits and vegetables don't do that. And what is the effect? Large amount of vitamins, fast release, body takes more than it needs. Where does it go? Remember our discussion about cancer. What is cancer? And I told you about the normal cells develop normally and the cancer cells develop abnormally and they're larger in number. Cancer cells grow fast. Cancer cells steal food. They steal water and nutrition. They need more to grow. And these synthetic vitamins are feeding them. So if anyone has a cancer growing in their body, you are feeding it with vitamins. The body has a limited capacity to fight cancer. And we lose that fight when we are feeding the cancer. So the million dollar question is, should we take vitamins or not? And the answer is yes and no. Check your vitamin level. If they're low, take vitamin supplements. Recheck the vitamin levels again. When normal, stop taking them. Go back to natural sources of vitamins. Go back to fruits and go back to vegetables. Do not waste your time, your money and your life. Natural sources of vitamins, again, they're all around us. They're easy. They're part of our diet. We eat them all day long. Why bother spending good money on something which is going to increase the risk of cancer? The billion dollar question, however, comes, and that is why nobody talks about cancer risk with vitamins. And the answer, very sadly, lies in the billions of dollars. Nutritional supplements is big business. 2016, it was a $122 billion business. 2020, $140.3 billion. In 2028, expected to rise to $196.6 billion. There are some really bad boys making big money, billions of dollars out of it. And they don't want you and me to know about it. And of course, they're generating revenue. They're creating jobs. They're giving the tax and they're killing people. Now, I would like you to look at the graphs here. In 2000, 33% of UK population were at risk of cancer. That's when I started working. In 2021, 50% of UK population are at risk of cancer. Somehow, nobody cares. Nobody wants to listen. The risk is rising from 33% to 50%. In the year 2000, the worldwide vitamin and supplement trade was less than 20 billion and now it's more than 140 billion. As the sale and the use of vitamins rises, so does the incidence of cancer. Can you see a link there? I think I can. And then another billion dollar question is, how much is the increase in cancer due to the increased use of vitamin supplements? That, my dear friends, is something we need to test in more trials and studies. But unfortunately, nobody is willing to fund and support them. And that is going to change in future. With Killing Cancer Kindly, me and you are going to push for that. We are going to ask for more trials. We are going to ask for more studies to find out what the link is. Till then, I think we should be warned. You know, cigarettes come with a warning. Smoking causes cancer. Vitamins do not come with that warning. They should do. 
they should be labeled as danger can increase risk of cancer. And when more studies and trials have shown for sure what the link is and what the magnitude is and how much they contribute to cancer, then maybe they should be banned or at least controlled. So today we have talked about the million dollar and billion dollar questions. It's time to up the ante. Let's talk about the trillion dollar question. Trillion because human life is priceless. And the question is, what should we do? We already talked about it. We said, if you have a vitamin deficiency, take synthetic vitamins, but stop them as soon as the deficiency is fulfilled. Go back to having natural vitamins. Do not treat vitamins any different from antibiotics. Antibiotics, do we take them every day? No. Would you like to take antibiotics every day for the rest of your life? The answer is no. So stop taking vitamins when you don't need them anymore and go back to natural forms. Mother Nature, the best supplier of vitamins, the essential nutrients of our body. The way vitamins come in fruits and vegetables is the best for us because our body would only absorb what we need. It wouldn't over flood the body with vitamins which would feed the cancer. Only the normal body cells would benefit from natural vitamins. Synthetic vitamins, no good. Coming back to the three promises I made to you, one of the promises we have fulfilled. We've talked about that deadly secret and we're going to share it with everyone. The second one was, I'm going to save you a lot of money and stop people stealing money from you. How's that going to happen? So if you know the secret that synthetic vitamins increase the risk of cancer, you do not spend your hard-earned cash on these toxic chemicals. You save yourself money. Cancer is a very expensive disease. For people who pay for their own health care, it can be one of the biggest causes of bankruptcy. Even in countries where the health care is provided for free by the state or by some uh, trusts, cancer doesn't make anyone richer. Um, come to think of it, let me take it back. It does make people rich. You know who are the people becoming rich with cancer? They are the mega rich pharmaceutical company owners uh, who provide us with synthetic vitamins, which over the years earn them a lot of money and increase the risk of cancer. And then they very conveniently and helpfully provide us with anti-cancer drugs, which make them even more money but lead us to financial meltdown and bankruptcy. So my advice, stop losing your money, your life and your health on synthetic vitamins and stop making some very, very, very rich people more rich because you and me are the ones who pay the cost. My name is Dr. Muhammad Munib Khan. I am a cancer specialist working in the United Kingdom. Killing cancer kindly is my lifelong mission to prevent, treat and cure cancer. The World Health Organization says that 50% of the cancers can be prevented. Half of the cancers can be stopped from happening. And it's my dream that you and me, we should achieve this. I'd like to invite you to join me in this mission. And it's easy to do so. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel and press the bell icon. So every time there's an update on how to prevent, treat and cure cancer. And every time I've got these well kept secrets, which I want to share with you and with everyone else, you would be notified of it. And then there's an Instagram and Twitter, Facebook and TikTok, And there's even a web page by the name of Killing Cancer Kindly. Together, you and me, we can join forces and we can win this war against cancer. Thank you very much for listening. I'm very grateful for your time. And I'd like to request you to share this message with as many people as possible. Together, we can save more lives. There is strength in numbers and we can achieve that. And we can make this world a better place to live. Thank you once again. From Killing Cancer Kindly, that's all for now. May you and your loved ones always be in good health and live a long life. Stay healthy and live long.